fellow Rotarians and guests, it is my pleasure to welcome our mayor president, Mayor Sharon Weston Broom. Thank you so much, Perry, for that introduction. It motivated me to keep pressing on. And thank you to all the Rotarians who are joining this experience today and to our fellow citizens who may also be viewing. You know, today marks the fifth year that I've been before the community of East Baton Rouge to deliver a report on the state of our city. This time last year, none of us thought that masks, hand sanitizers, and thermometers would dominate our lives as we navigated a global pandemic, or that the health and well being of our city and parish would dominate entire news cycles and conversations. So today I'm going to borrow the dimensions of wellness, which dictates good self stewardship for ourselves and for those we care about and who care about us, as well as the environment in which we live and thrive. Wellness can be defined as the state of being in good health, especially as an actively pursued goal or measures of a patient's progress towards wellness. It is important for all of us to discuss and understand wellness, the wellness of our community in terms of health, emotional and mental health, economics, and equally our quality of place and quality of life. I will use this as a backdrop of where we are and where we're going as a city parish. In 2020, the physical health of our community was at the forefront of all conversations. For the last 10 months, our community has worked collaboratively to navigate a global health crisis that has reshaped the world as we know it. Before I move forward with our discussion on this pandemic, I must take a moment to acknowledge and thank those who have been on the front lines of Baton Rouge's response to this pandemic for the last 306 days. Our medical personnel, first responders, our police officers, our grocery store clerks, our educators, and one of the most intimate for me, our city parish employees that have worked tirelessly to meet the needs of our community. And for that, I cannot thank you enough. Because of your dedication, our community has been able to move forward in the face of adversity. Throughout this pandemic, I've worked closely with our healthcare partners to create a unified response to COVID-19. This allowed us to stand up the first community-based testing site in the state of Louisiana. This site provided a valuable resource when testing was not wildly widely available in our community. Since the beginning of this pandemic, we have tripled the number of COVID-19 testing sites. We have done this with equitable access and opportunity for our residents at the forefront. Although we have come a long way since then, our fight against COVID-19 is not done yet. As of noon today, the Louisiana Department of Health is reporting that Baton Rouge has 25,519 confirmed positive COVID-19 cases. While this total is cumulative and not all of these cases are active, East Baton Rouge Parish just recorded our third highest day of reported new cases since the pandemic began. On January 6, 2021, we reported 492 new positive COVID cases in one day. In Region 2, we're currently having 226 COVID-19 patients in the hospital. 226 of our friends, neighbors, and loved ones who are hospitalized due to COVID-19. Our actions and the effects of community spread are displayed in those halls and those suffering from COVID-19 are not the only ones affected. These rising case numbers affect our medical community who are working long hours to accommodate for the surge in cases. They are affecting the loved ones of patients who can't visit their family members due to COVID-19. They're affecting our first responders who put themselves at risk of exposure every day. And they are affecting every single person in our community. 
The effects of this pandemic go beyond hospitalizations and mitigation measures. It directly threatens the lives of our residents. On March 24, 2020, Baton Rouge lost its first soul to COVID-19. That was 294 days ago. And over those 294 days, we have lost 582 people to COVID-19. That is an average of two people a day. Each day we have lost an average of two mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, friends, coworkers, grandparents, or loved ones. As a system, we continue to do our part, but it's not enough. We need each person listening to the sound of my voice today to remember those losses as you navigate about your daily experiences. I will say it again, East Baton Rouge Parish is still in the fight when it comes to this pandemic and we must govern ourselves accordingly. With this in mind, I will continue to work steadfast with our healthcare community to increase testing. This same perspective will be used as we work to roll out the much awaited vaccination and as we work to transform the healthcare landscape in Baton Rouge. Throughout this pandemic, we've seen how the issues facing our community don't exist in solitude, they are interwoven and complex. And as we move forward, we must work to transform every facet of the issues facing our community. In 2021 and beyond, Healthy BR will engage in coalition building to change the healthcare sector in Baton Rouge. Equally important to the physical condition of our city and parish and residents is the emotional and mental condition of our community. Through our Resiliency in Communities After Stress and Trauma initiative, known as RECAST, we have touched over 60,000 people, of uh, 60,000 of our residents with trauma-informed education and awareness services. Our RECAST coalition works to address stigma and awareness of mental health and substance abuse, works with healthcare providers to integrate behavioral health services into primary care clinics, works with healthcare providers and community groups to become more trauma-informed, and works with community organizations and institutions to address services for people who are experiencing behavioral health challenges in regards to jail diversion, re-entry, and homelessness. In 2021, we plan to significantly expand our outreach by providing services for 100,000 of our residents. The mental and behavioral wellness of our community is a top priority. These are vital to the foundation of our community and must be prioritized for our residents to thrive. While the Earth's systems of natural resources are certainly vital to our community, I want to spend a moment focusing on the environment in which we connect and grow as a community, our social environment, through the lens of the collective influences that shape life in our city and parish. There was a daunting news headline on January 8th surrounding the gun violence surges and homicides in our city. I encourage you to read this article in its entirety because the writers offer insight about the complexities of crime. These complexities mean that there is no band-aid solution that will effectively end crime in our community. We must all come together to address the factors that contribute to this behavior. Only then will we be able to effectively reduce crime in Baton Rouge. The approach that we will lead with going forward is clear and touches the foundation of the work needed to address crime head on. We will continue to support law enforcement agency efforts to proactively protect and serve our community. We will continuously build community-based public safety that empowers our community and addresses the needs that exist with our youth and our families and our neighborhoods. And we will utilize a mental health approach to address unresolved trauma 
and ongoing mental health issues that lead to a cycle of violence. Moving forward, my safe, hopeful, and healthy initiative will look at the root causes of violence, the lack of access to education, food, health care, shelter, economic opportunity, all that work, and we will work to implement these solutions. We will work through the lens of public health to treat violence as an epidemic. We will interrupt the cycle of violence in vulnerable communities through implementing our Baton Rouge Community Street Team, a neighborhood-centered strategy that employs community members as outreach workers to proactively assist in the reduction of violence and crime in targeted areas. These outreach workers will couple their understanding of neighborhood dynamics with professionally trained intervention tactics to mediate conflicts and connect citizens to resources that will improve and enhance their quality of life. This will enable our neighborhoods to heal from the inside out. I've always said that our young people are the foundation of our future, which is why they must be involved in our solutions. Slowing the spread of violence by employing school-based outreach practices in our neighborhoods with the highest rates of crime. These outreach workers will work directly with our youth to counteract negative behaviors that later turn into offenses. Through healthcare centers in schools, we expect to see this begin as early as the second quarter of this year. Safe, hopeful, and healthy will help the city parish develop proactive and transformative change within our community before violence happens and to prevent repeat offenses. Since taking office in 2017, my administration has worked with the Baton Rouge Police Department to implement transformative change in our policing policies and bring our department into 21st century policing standards. Additionally, my administration recently secured a 3% pay raise for every Baton Rouge police officer in the 2021 operating budget. This raise, funded entirely by implementing efficiency practices within the department, is a first step towards making the Baton Rouge Police Department competitive with surrounding agencies, which will help us attract and retain qualified officers to protect and serve. So if our city is going to fulfill the vision of peace, prosperity, and progress, we must intensify our efforts to address quality of place factors. I wanna share with you a letter that I recently received from a constituent dated January 6, 2021. Dear Mayor Broom, a note to tell you how much I appreciated your Christmas card. I was honored to receive it and was so happy that you have four more years as our leader. Speaking for my neighbors, I ask that we have a cleaner, litter-free city. We also ask that our waterways and drainage passageways be cleared and kept clear. Thank you very much and best wishes for a successful four years. Well, I agree with this constituent and she couldn't have put it more clearly. The city parish is working to comprehensively address the quality of place within our community because we know the role it plays within our quality of life. We are developing a coordinated action plan to operate and maintain quality of place standards through basic city parish services, empowering our community members to address challenges in their own neighborhoods and align anti-litter messaging and reinforce policies and ordinances to curtail littering. Our efforts will center on blight reduction actions, including the creation and dedication of a crew within the Department of Public Works focused on blight reduction, community involvement, and a strategic plan of action to address blighted areas within our parish. However, City Parish can't take on improving quality of place alone. These issues require the commitment and involvement of the community as well. My neighborhood engagement hub will house all of our community and neighborhood interventions to improve quality of place. 
These are opportunities for trainings, cleanups, and connecting with City Parish to implement change on your block. Our infrastructure is the foundation of our community, and our drainage infrastructure is a key factor in the mitigation of natural disasters and the resiliency of our community. Our community here in Baton Rouge is located on the most expansive waterway within North America. It is prone to rainfall and lies within an impressive system of bayous and watersheds. Water management must be considered in our infrastructure. The Stormwater Master Plan is an effort to understand the high risk areas and create a plan of action to move our city parish forward toward a future when our communities experience less flooding, our valuable property is protected, and our family and friends are safe. When completed, the Stormwater Master Plan will serve as a dynamic roadmap for drainage improvements and policy solutions that will make our city parish more resilient. Our infrastructure goes beyond the bounds of our waterways. We must also work tirelessly to improve the safety and efficiency of our ro uh, roadways. Move EBR was undoubtedly one of the top quality of place accomplishments in the past four years. The largest infrastructure project in the history of Baton Rouge is scheduled to begin 24 capacity projects and 44 core uh, enhancement projects by the end of 2021 and 2022. My goal is to have 30% of movie BR projects completed by the end of 2024. This would be a $300 million capital expenditure on infrastructure improvements, not only improving our infrastructure, but creating a huge stimulus in our local economy. Additionally, MOVE EBR is also leading the way for DBE inclusion and awards and capital projects. Certainly an important component of quality of place is the artistic and cultural vitality of our city. While today we don't know exactly when we will return to the days of festivals, concerts, conventions, and gatherings, I will work with our arts and cultural community to support vital arts experiences in 2021. I don't wanna spoil the details just yet, so stay tuned for more information in the future. When we focus on the financial and economic wellness of our city parish, we can't ignore the impact the COVID-19 crisis has had on us. This pandemic has prompted and elevated a level of innovation and creativity, including the acceleration in the use of technology. Today's virtual state of the city is evidence of that. In the summer of 2020, McKinsey and Company surveyed Baton Rouge's economic outlook. A major finding was that Baton Rouge is ranked fifth amongst peer cities in terms of broadband access. My administration has set its sights on working with telecommunication companies to expand our infrastructure and bring our broadband access up to 90% of residents by 2021. In that same vein, over the next four years, we will continue our aggressive outreach to sectors that are critical to our economy to work with companies to attract quality, high paying jobs and investments in our region. Because of that continued aggressive outreach to business partners, we're currently on track to have the groundbreaking for a major food retailer to break ground in North Baton Rouge by the end of 2021. We're working to expand the bounds of economic opportunity in Baton Rouge like never before. In an unprecedented manner, my office has sought the inclusion of our business community in achieving my goals. We have embraced the public-private partnership model to address multiple projects. And I have a keen awareness that government, government cannot operate in a silo or answer some of the challenges presented within our business community. That is why not only have we counted on the private sector to help us achieve our goals, but we have made investment in the private sector and our local businesses. That is an important pillar of our work. A strong business ecosystem is paramount to our success. Our programs such as BR Pop, Keep BR Serving, and Restart BR 
are just three examples of how we have leveraged the resources and relationships at City Hall to help keep our economy thriving even in hard times. Additionally gone are the days of all businesses not being able to participate in the transformation and work of city parish government. Diversity and inclusion in our contracting will continue to be a priority. To remain true to furthering an equitable and inclusive city parish, we have partnered with Breck and the Baton Rouge Airport to develop a joint certification program and are moving towards creating a fair share ordinance for socially disadvantaged business enterprises. These efforts will transform the playing field for DBEs and allow the city parish government to implement and execute equitable business and financial policies. It is not lost on me that another key component of engagement in the transformation is how we prepare our workforce to be responsive and resilient to the industries we attract and retain in East Baton Rouge Parish. A diversified industry and employer base is the hallmark of a stable and healthy economy. And so we must recruit and develop a workforce to achieve this type of diversity. It is my mission to bolster this engagement by transforming the way our human services arm of City Parish functions. We have seen success with our Employee BR program, but I want to take it to a new level, to new heights, to be a catalyst for preparing a workforce for not just today, but tomorrow and years to come. I could continue with our wellness check uh, as we talk about payrolls and jobs and investment in our uh, entrepreneurs. But you can see more on brla.gov forward slash mayor. However, before I conclude, I must address the social wellness of our city parish with regards to the welfare of humanity. Last year, in the wake of the killing of George Floyd, I signed an executive order to establish the Mayor's Commission on Racial Equity and Inclusion. Upon the announcement of Corey, our office received an overwhelming response from the community, resulting in 198 applicants. These applicants were from all walks of life. Some were attorneys, professors, students, others were mothers, e event planners, but everyone was a concerned resident. And although only 24 applicants were selected, what their engagement showed was that Baton Rouge cared about racial equity and was eager to transform Baton Rouge for the better. We will use the findings of Corey to create systemic transformative change within Baton Rouge and our surrounding communities. You can view their report and recommendations online at brla.gov forward slash equity commission. That's brla.gov forward slash equity commission. As we move into the future, I am increasingly aware of the need for continuous community input and conversation around the creation and implementation of equitable systems within our community. The commission will continue to exist as a collaborative partnership between Healthy BR and the Office of Community Development. This will allow our city parish government to approach racial equity through the lens of health to build and sustain equity for the entire parish. We will work to address inequities in health and education. On this upcoming Monday, January 18th, we will commemorate and celebrate the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. This year marks the 35th anniversary of the federal holiday in honor of Reverend King's birthday. We will honor a man who advanced civil rights and social justice through nonviolent protests a stark contrast to the recent riot that took place at our nation's capital. While I encourage you to read and ponder his words as we approach Monday, 
I leave you with this quote from Dr. King. In the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. May God bless you and may God bless the city of Baton Rouge and East Baton Rouge Parish, our state and our nation. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, that was awesome. So um, as you might not be surprised, we do have a whole lot of questions. A whole so, lot of questions or a few questions? <laughs> oh, we, we, we've got a bunch. Uh, uh, first question, uh, David Coke asked, what plans do you have to attract new businesses to Baton Rouge? Well, that's a great question, uh, David. Uh, we have already started, started attracting new businesses to Baton Rouge. One of the ways we have done that is through me actively communicating and pursuing uh, different corporations from around our country. I, last year, I sent out uh, a number of letters to CEOs in the medical and tech industry, and several of them responded. And that was followed up with uh, virtual meetings and phone calls. So that is certainly one way that we are attracting new businesses. And let me just share this with you oftentimes, um, as you have seen perhaps in a recent headline, uh, sometimes we cannot share all information about all the work that's going on the, behind the scenes to attract new businesses. Uh, but certainly I will tell you that uh, the work that we have done and are doing is uh, certainly reaping dividends. That's great to hear. I'm very excited about that potential project somewhere around the Florida airline area that we can't talk about. Um, the next question, this is actually a question for me. Um, tell us about your involvement in the Mississippi Rivers uh, Cities and Towns Initiative and the upcoming convention coming here to Baton Rouge. Very excited about that. I'm so glad you brought it up because Rotary, the Rotary Club International is a partner with the Mississippi River Cities and Towns Initiative. And of course, this is a, a group of mayors who uh, represent cities along the Mississippi River. And uh, what I love about this organization, in addition to certainly looking at the impact of the Mississippi River uh, along um, uh, our uh, nation, along its path. Uh, we are a group, uh, a bipartisan group that is singularly focused on seeing how we can address uh, water mitigation issues and issues that we all uh, have challenges with uh, by the mere fact that we are along the Mississippi River. Uh, we most recently uh, were able to work together to get the resiliency loan uh, package uh, passed through Congress, which will afford loans to many cities uh, who are having challenges due to flooding uh, as they move forward. So that was a major initiative. And uh, as co-chair of the Mississippi River Cities Initiative, I'm uh, proud to say that uh, the 2021 convention will be held right here on this end of the Mississippi in the capital city of Baton Rouge. That's and Rotary problem. Club has been a, a, um, a great partner as we move forward to ad address a lot of the environmental issues like I talked about earlier around uh, uh, litter in our waterways. Yes, ma'am, we are, we are looking forward to getting involved in, uh, there's a project coming up in April. We're gonna, I'm gonna be part of the meeting in a little while. It's gonna learn more about picking up trash along the river. So we're very excited about that. Stephanie Regal asked, given the COVID numbers, do you plan to move Baton Rouge to a modified phase one, such as what New Orleans is doing? Stephanie, you know I'm having a press conference tomorrow, and I will tell you what's going to take place then. Uh, but I will say this. You heard me say in my comments earlier that uh, we are not out of the woods, as you well know, when it relates to uh, COVID-19 and the impact of uh, the impact this uh, pandemic is having on our community. The governor just spoke yesterday and uh, expressed that we will remain in uh, phase two. Uh, it is my desire to see our city uh, 
strengthen its compliance. I, I have a very uh, strong concern about the compliance that is not taking place among uh, some members of our community. So I'll talk a little bit about that tomorrow, um, as well as have some of our medical professionals uh, and business folks with us. So Jeff, stay tuned tomorrow. Jeff Zimmerman uh, commented, uh, Madam Mayor, other cities have experienced social upheaval with large scale protests movements that have scarred the cities. For the most part, Baton Rouge has been spared from those incidents. What has your administration done to help mitigate these activities? I'm a firm believer, Jeff, that um, in many instances, what, uh, what is needed is open lines of communication. Uh, last year, I kept my lines of communication fluid with those who had concerns, uh, many of the uh, young protesters uh, who had concerns about, uh, of course, the issues that uh, were transpiring in our nation and even here in our own uh, community. And so I believe that one of the key factors as a leader is to be a good listener and a good communicator. And I, I will attribute that to a lot. In addition, I can't uh, tell you uh, also speak highly enough of the team of people that I have working with me who are out among uh, our community members. And, and, and so all of that helps uh, stabilize and, and bring peace uh, to a community, in addition to a lot of people who pray for peace for our community. That's awesome. Uh, Renee Chatelaine uh, said, thank you for championing the arts and culture. Thanks, Renee. And we'll have some things on the drawing board in 2021, uh, some virtual experiences. And of course, we we have our uh, poet laureate for uh, Baton Rouge also that we'll be exposing more. Uh, Martin Morgmar would like to know about getting the assessor to uh, fairly <laughs> value properties. Is there something that you can do there to, to help get that moving along? Marvin, I think you're doing it right now. You have to advocate. You know, I tell people, uh, certainly uh, I am elected to office. The assessor is elected. The sheriff is elected. The DA is elected. So when those of us who are elected officials, um, uh, if you have some concerns with certain areas that we're responsible for, I think you have to go straight to the source. And so I encourage you and many others that have shared concerns to talk to your uh, to talk to our assessor about your concerns. Shelley Dupree said, "With the widening, will the widening of Perkins Road between Segan and Highland Road will it be part of the next phase of Move Baton Rouge?" So Perkins uh, Perkins Road will be widened from Segan to Piku under Move EBR. Uh, uh, with now interchanges on I-10 and Piku and Highland. Okay, and Jeff also, Jeff Zimmerman also asked, can you give us an update on the status of the City uh, of St. George initiative within the parish? Well, at the present time, uh, the status is that there is not a, a City of St. George, as you know, and I, I, I look, I always like to explain our status because uh, where we are right now, we are in litigation. The litigation is uh, not against the election that took place. The litigation is required by statute, uh, or gives us a tool, I should say, by revised statute to request a plan of action moving forward for anyone who is going to establish a city, a breakaway city like this. And so we're now just waiting to see if this uh, litigation will produce a plan of action. Everyone uh, desires a plan and should receive a plan, especially with the impact that a city of 86,000 people will not only have for the folks inside of that city, but those who are outside of the city as well. So that's where we are. We have another question from uh, Tony KM. How do we get in touch with our council person to, to discuss concerns about our neighborhood? Well, uh, first of all, let me say congratulations to the new council that just got sworn in. And today is their first meeting, I believe. 
uh, uh, besides their organizational meeting. And so uh, to get in touch with your council person, uh, you can call 389-3000. Uh, they will direct you to their office. Secondly, go to brla.gov. That's our website, brla.gov. You will see each council member's information there. You can email them or you can call them as well. Mayor, Mayor Boom, thank you so much for spending some time with us. Congratulations again on, on your recent re-election and look forward to four more great years with you in office. Thank you so much. Thank you, Baton Rouge and Rotarians. Let's stay strong as we move forward. God bless. Thank you.